I was asked by Matt Hellman from Memorial and Sloan Kettering to give a talk about multiplexed immunohistochemistry and its role or value um, towards identifying biomarkers, predictive biomarkers uh, to immunotherapeutic agents. And so right now with the shift moving from targeting oncogenes to targeting native proteins, um, those native proteins are expressed by different cell types um, in the tumor microenvironment and can be in the in different cellular microenvironments. And w the problem with that is that because they're native, when you homogenize a sample, um, you don't know what the cellular sources are. So what multiplex IHC does is it introduces spatial resolution into the tumor microenvironment in order to understand where are these proteins being expressed and by which cell types and uh, what what are the, in what kind of niche are they in, in the tumor microenvironment? The big, the big challenge is that with, with, with oncogenes, with cancer cells, you can identify genes that are mutated that you know are derived from a cancer cell. But with uh, immunotherapy and targeting proteins that are native, um, the issue is that you want to um, the, the, the cell types, the immune cell types, are they lack mutations. There's a wide variety of immune cell types, and they're highly plastic, which means that they can change their function just based on what, what, what area of the tumor microenvironment they're in. So how do we capture that? And so what we do is we interrogate a tumor slide, or a, a tumor, with multiple antibodies that have different colors. Right? And then once we do that, we introduce imaging analysis. And what we've done is we've introduced machine-based learning to capture on the single pixel resolution level what all these different antibodies are, um, where they're localized in the tumor. So what it essentially does is it generates a map. And that map, we bring meaning to that map through imaging analysis. So we can understand, for example, if there are certain immune cell types that were present before getting immunotherapy and then looking at how those cell types evolve, how they've changed during immunotherapy, and then we correlate it with treatment outcome, for example, whether patients responded to therapy or patients progressed. We started off with uh, pembrolizumab, which is anti-PD-1, and so that's a monoclonal antibody that targets the PD-1 receptor, the programmed death one receptor, on, on T cells and natural killer cells. And what we found, uh, we published a paper in the end of 2014, and we found that if you had pre-existing T cell um, immun Im Im uh, immunity in the tumor, meaning that tumor was recognized by CD8 T cells uh, in the tumor, when you introduced anti-PD-1 therapy into those tumors, those patients were more likely to respond to anti-PD-1 therapy. So what we found since then is that there's many other cell types in the tumor that are interacting with those CD8 T cells, as well as interacting with the cancer cells that play a large role and impact whether that tumor is going to respond or not respond to anti-PD-1 therapy. Right now in terms of the large focus has been on PD-L1 and what we're finding is that, considering the complexity of the immune system, how many immune cell types you have, the fact that they're plastic, they lack mutations, and that cancer cells are plastic, and you have a lot of stromal cells, that a single marker to accurately capture the complexity and dynamic state of the tumor microenvironment is actually quite challenging. And not only that, but the, the way of identifying signal in that tumor microenvironment is actually quite challenging. So I think where the field is going to go is that we're going to be capturing multiple data points about the tumor microenvironment in order to capture the, the, what is, what the, the function of that tumor. Psychologically speaking, it, it, it has the ability to really negatively impact patients and ultimately our goal is to serve our patients in, in the best way possible. Now the when they hear that, for example, let's say you have a patient that has non-small cell lung cancer, squamous type, and they're PD-L1 negative according to the assay, 
which has its drawbacks alone, um, that can certainly negatively impact the, 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 the patient and the family. What the, the positive, the, the, the twist to this is that the number of combinations that are coming in, that are coming through the pipeline, I, I think there's a lot of hope that despite them being negative for one marker where they can't get one specific drug, I think it's just a matter of time and in short time that we'll be able to identify combinations for those patients that they can go um, and enroll into in terms of a phase one clinical trial. So always remain hopeful and positive. It, it has, I think it's early. Um, you know, when you take a look at who's leading the world of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and, and, and deep learning, it's the larger tech companies, right? Facebook, Google, Elon Musk's group. Now, what, what, where though, the, the, the key is that, can, the big question is, can we leverage the open source code that has been provided by all these companies to integrate massive amounts of large data in order to identify signatures or biological information that we otherwise could not. It hasn't impacted clinical trial design yet, but my expectation is that it will as it goes from a proof of concept to actually becoming a mainstay integrated way of identifying um, or capturing information that's important that impacts the way clinical trials are designed. We're, we're just not there yet, I think it's too early. Yeah, I, I think from my, my perspective, the two big goals, you know, three to five year plan is to do two things. Is one, to identify new proteins or targets that are either not emphasized today, undervalued, or just not known, that upon either agon blocking it or um, stimulating it actually really changes the tumor in terms of its immunogenicity, right? So I think drug target discovery is one area. The other is getting more personal with personalized medicine, and that's um, integrating a model that captures information from the patient's peripheral blood, as well as background clinical history, clinical variables, as well as the tumor microenvironment, integrating them into a predictive model that really accurately uh, predicts the patient's response to any given intervention. So it's going to be predictive biomarkers and drug target discovery. I think the ultimate goal here is to serve patients in innovative ways that uh, change the quality of their life in terms of dealing with a major challenge. All right? And I think we're sitting in a, uh, we're, we're in a very innovative, uh, rapidly changing time in immuno-oncology and so it's a wonderful opportunity to serve patients and with the integration of these new technologies whether it's uh, looking at multiplexed IHC or spatially resolved mapping of the tumor microenvironment and machine-based learning and integrating neoangiogen densities mutation loads I think in the next five years we're going to see inc uh, incredible improvements um, and milestone achievements that it's going to change the field of immuno-oncology.